And now we will have the director of the geophysic uh, director uh, in the universe through the conference. I want to remind you that if you have any questions for the com for our um, speakers, to please write down your questions, and our helpers are picking them up so that we can um, ask them w as soon as we do go through the um, interview we're doing for uh, our. And now you will be seeing the questions from Maria Teresa Larcon, and you will be seeing a video from Australia. Pause. But the uh, actual position at the panel in transition. Information about tools. Pause. Australia. Information. There's a there's a mishap with the technical part. It's giving a I'm sorry. I'm sure that Australians speak a better Spanish and English than this. We will start with Dr. Nelson Obregón's uh, conference. <laughs> Good afternoon for everybody. Thank you very much for teacher Edgar Gonzalez for joining me. And of course to welcome our visitors to the University of Javeriana in Colombia. What we basically what I want to share in these 20 minutes is the experience that we have had in our country with the uh, presidency, which has been nominated one of the four macro projects uh, due to the uh, rainfall that we had in 2012. And uh, so we, we needed the tools to be able to take decisions and basically mostly for our visitors you know the problem we have in Colombia is very varied it varies a lot for one side we have the hydro uh, um, you know have inundations uh, d the mountain falls and now right now we're talking about droughts the effect of the of the boy of El Nino and the consequences that we find a lot of um, environmental pollution and also the problem with hydro hydroelectric uh, generation. And now, now what we're going to talk about mostly is our what we want to propose tomorrow. It has to do with uh, proposing to one of these uh, regions to uh, as a cooperation with East and Latin America precisely because of the developments we have done and because of the problem we are having with mercury, with the illegal and legal uh, explosion of uh, gold in that area. So mostly we want to go through um, what happened between 2010 and 2012 and how we were able to see the, d the uh, uh, things we are missing in the country to be able to figure out how the uh, water moves in our country. Second, I uh, we want to talk how that has showed that um, the gold mining production and the mercury related problem in the Mohana region, which is a region in Colombia, and how in that specific pre um, problem, there's a very, very pro big problem with mercury and topics that have to do with um, the gorillas and everything that goes behind the illegal mining. And the third part I want to talk about is uh, about a couple of studies 
model to study fate and transport process of Mercury in the Mohana region. And you know, because we don't start from zeros, now we know a little bit more about what's happening with water in that area in bidimensional and three dimensional ways. But mostly, what are the needs uh, that happens in that area, especially with the motivation with the nano biology and everything that we're talking about in this conference. The girl in the girl phenomena in 2010-2012 was uh, it's a, a it's associated to very big rainfalls. And what happened between 2010 and 2011, the first semester of 2010 we had the lowest levels in our rivers and then, then in that may same year at the second semester we had the most intense uh rainfalls and all the consequences that this can bring and then 2011 we also had two niñas which made two girls one after the other that really affected a whole bunch of 10 percent of the colombian uh, population we have here very close the, the university of savannah and all the different places that were, um, and we were able to analyze them in different parts of the country. The infrastructure, there was a lot of things that had to be fixed. We had a lot of avalanches, uh, vulnerability, and the structures uh, where we uh, pick up our water, and all the infrastructure that has to do with uh, transportation, the children, how we're affected as well. We have been seeing able to how it is in uh, different parts of Colombia as w as we have it from here in the interior. Uh, the farmers they they let the the inundations come through because they get new nutrients and a lot of food. The concept and the outsider uh, part of the country isn't as bad as it is for us in the interior. During the Niña, a great big uh amount of the people in Colombia were affected. One of the most important region was the one of Mohana. I'm going to show you right now where it is. Some of you might know where it is. So we had four micro projects with President Santos. One is about the uh, municipio of Gramalote, which is uh, in the frontier with Venezuela. And there was a lot of uh, landfalls. We also had the region in Cali in the south. And we have the Canal Indique, which is up on the north. And then this project I want to share with you, which is called the Macro Project of the Mohana. So people that don't know uh, where we're, where it's all located, the polygon where we are studied how the water moves is the one you can see in this region right here. It's 11,000 square um, kilometers. It's one big, uh, like, uh, it's a delta. It's a big, like, cup of water that receives uh, water. And there's uh, this particularity where uh, the river San Jorge wouldn't come. We'll show you what how the mining happens in this uh, region. And we have with all this, the water, um, we have the Rio Cauca, Rio Nichu, Nichi. All these rivers, the main rivers for Colombia. Rio Cauca meets with Rio Magdalena, which is our most important river in the country. What we had to do was try to reduce the amount of uh, problems produced because of the extra water. And our specialists, especially the ones in, uh, in environmental engineer, had took advantage to be able uh, to show different studies that have been done of uh, the mercury, that concentration that has been taken in different parts of that area. And how after, because of the girl, how this river that has some very high uh, contaminated um, contamination uh, brought a lot of problems in this area, especially with the food being intoxicated. This is one of the most uh, complex systems in the in the world because of all the rivers that come through here. More than 70% of the Colombians live around this um, Magdalena and Cauca River. We haven't been able to understand totally how the ri water moves in Colombia. Right here we can see how there's big um, water uh, embosses that are being um, all this through the Rio 
Magdalena, Rio Cauca, all these different parts are being water collected. We don't know if we open the doors in this area, what will happen with the toxins in this area. We don't know if the different parts of where we open the doors, what the type of um, disaster that can can happen. We are a very reactive uh, country. We don't have the slightest idea how the storms move, or we don't know. We always react to the different situations that happen in the country. So we're trying to get these tools, which is probably what Dr. Edgar is telling us. We need data, and you know this is a cycle, model, cycle, model, cycles until we're able to figure things out and uh, organize it to be able to make better decisions. So right here, in this area right here, the more than uh, 200,000 people were affected. More than uh, 20 health centers were destroyed. 180 schools, uh, thousands of houses destroyed, and different systems were affected. So if we stop a moment, and right here we can see where the Rio Cauca is, where we find a, a dike here, that which has uh, very been a polemic because it broke, and it has made some it broke. It has broken in different areas right here, and you can see how all this water, uh, water was flowing. And till last year, it was able to close these uh, breaches, and it has uh, a lot of money was spent there. But the biggest implication here was that right here, down here, you can see Rio Nechi, which is in the northern, northeastern part of uh, Antioquia, where there's a lot of um, mining and a lot of paramilitary so it's a very dangerous zone so this area right here broke and all this water started flowing through and we were able to see how everything was affected more than 20 cienegas that um, are in that area which have to do with um, food being intoxicated so what they told us was to build artifacts that will lower the risk and after three years, we've been able to fix it. So part of our uh, proposal is that we hope that this will be one of the the programs as for this forum. Now we're able to. What we wanted to do was to um, we wanted to make things move, and we were just a small key, a small step to help this happen we have tridimensional we have the w the how the water moves and all this is being able so uh, just like our conferences have been showing that when we have all this we can def uh, figure it out all this part we have done it and one of the reasons uh, precisely is that this was conceived like what we call by the center our national center of modulation this project was done be through a com uh, a special treaty with um, with the Magdalena River, the Cor Magdalena, which is the ones that are in charge of the movement of the transportation in our main river, the adaptation fund, the presidency, and this committee has been helped us to be able to have tools and to be able to start working. And this is going to considered as a seed for us to us, uh, several people in the country are interested in making this work. So basically what we want did was we worked in this area and how to try to understand how the water moves through the uh, water flows and how the risks um, are affecting and how they, they could the, the probability of risks alternatives and intervention and now we're starting to um, talk about our action plans and we want to talk about how these tools and artifacts are going to be used to be able to work and how are we how's it working not only the basics but only th and in the water but also with these tools to be able to have some kind of control I'm going to explain to you why why Colombian territory in particular could be a pilot project, mostly because it has the basic line. We're not starting from zero. The proposal is 
if you already have a line, a basic line, on you know the flooding, the risk, and the alternatives, then you know try. I'm going to analyze a little bit more so we can have the tools, especially with the uh, metals. And right now, with the, we have find that that there is an arsenic. Um, and mercury is a problem, but the arsenic is very high level in that area, and we don't n have the muscle for that kind of stuff. One of the reasons is because the um, government did a big effort. This is uh, an old uh, technology, but we have we have like what they call the skin of the the rain model range model. This is done with uh, tec lighter technology. And what we're hoping is that several corporations and La Dimar, uh, several com um, companies, the IDEAM and other entities are starting to make the country by pieces. And this kind of technology is the one that will help us uh, have a high resolution uh, topography of the country. We have the pixel concept. We have one by one meters uh, in the 11,000 kilometers of this area. And we had never done this in the country, and this is the first one we have done in the country. So we passed from, uh, this is what we had before, and now we have it. Uh, the, the spatial resolution was 30 meters, and now it's to one meter resolution. So we had uh, uh, quite a few uh, imprecisions with what the NASA was giving us of 25 meters and now we're into 10 centimeters and which is very important for the floodings and other kind of uh, risks. We pass from cartography from 5 meters to 20 centimeters as in spatial resolution. We have that already in several parts of the country. Now we have keep on measuring and as long as the water we will have uh, from meteorological radars where we have these new uh, radars and you know they start detecting drops and they help us understand uh, understand the rains in big extensions so since this gives us a big um, big areas so right here in Bogotá area we have this one in Subachocas in Corozal and we have the one in San Andres and we have the radars by Indes which are also working with so if we can have the um, eastern part of the country there is a big effort from the government to be able to have uh, new tools that in this way case the water measure the water and how it moves and what kinds of implications it has for environmental studies this is one of the regions that is most complex this for our visitants especially Right, basically this is where we are. 70% of the uh, Colombian population live in this area. It's, uh, it's a area of the country that has been uh, pressured and they want to uh, open new places of living for the people because there's two, we have half of our country is not being used. We have the 70% of the Colombians here and right there in this area half of the country is not uh, being used where our resources are. Right here we have 11,000, 11, we have four municipals, four departments, Bolívar, Antioquia, Sucre, and Córdoba. The municipals and with the um, mines, with the mining region, are the ones that are with the Rio Nechi, and all this area of the Rio San Jorge, and they interact with all these cienegas, more than 300 cienegas, more than 200 creeks of the most uh, complex systems gives us an idea of what's happening here why is this region so has so much mercury this map shows us the 39 municipal areas of this uh, region and how they are connected um, through the water in these 11,000 square meters square kilometers all this area right here where I'm showing you where there's a lot of illegal um, mining where we know they are working with mercury to be able to get the gold when it the doors broke and all the wa all this area got contaminated 
12.5 tons are produced in that th in those 39 uh, in the country 49 tons of gold in the in a, during the year of gold is produced so here we can see one of these cienagas we can see a uh, thing that happens here when it rains it goes through all this where is all this going to stop more than 200,000 informal gold miners and all the problem that this brings uh, illegally initially illegally. if any of you have ever gone to one of those areas the tension that is lived in that area is quite high because of the paramilitaries more n more information is 5.5 25 5.7 kilograms of mercury for each gram of gold so this is very high this is with the small minings this gives us more or less an average of 7 kilograms for each 7 kilograms of mercury for each kilogram of gold is what we're polluting the environment in Colombia so if we do that in uh, Colombia, we're talking about 300 tons, 400 tons, 500 tons of mercury we are throwing into the environment in Colombia, just to talk of for some, some data. We have some baseline to try to understand this. We have some publications. The uh, teacher from uh, uh, Marugo, Cartagena University, where they basically have measured in different compartments in water, in sediments, in sediments in the, the floors, in uh, human beings, in their hair, in fish, the carnivorous and non carnivorous, in the vegetables, in turtles, and uh, cows. The mercury, total mercury, and metal mercury, these are the references, and we have. Uh, several information that has given us a baseline to be able to figure out what's happening now with what we want to do. Here's a a small um, of this. Uh, here we can see the total mercury and the metal mercury. Here we can see these are medium values, and right here is the limited um, recommended limit. Right here, we're very worried about this one the metal mercury in uh, carnivorous fish I'm about to finish which means with a uh, atopic uh, chain so what we are proposing is to have taken into advantage all of these uh, information why don't we think of a artifact since we already understand how water works and everything that is happening in this area and maybe with some interactions of the phytoplankton, why not think in a proposal? The models will help us with a lot of things, won't resolve everything, but will help us a lot, especially that the models will help us think in our chain. The help and the questions will help us the initial conditions. Let's say, for example, if I do this, and not in time, wh how it will change, what will happen between two or three years. Try to understand all this phenomenology and all this experience especially with the arsenic and the Bahia San Francisco, the San Francisco Bay. This is not the first time that this has been worked. To be able to understand that there are feedbacks when we see the cycle of mercury, when we see the cycle of mercury, which is one of the most complex ones that there is because of the speciation that it has, to be able to understand the interaction and the water and the atmosphere, the water and the sediments, the part of the water and the floor, we have it quite um, advanced, but we still don't have it with a phytoplankton, which I'm sure the one that the teacher Edgar was talking about, we can work between three to six years. We're also working on some of the start students that if with a little data we have to be able to calibrate these models and with uh, we have meteorologists uh, to be able to give this in different areas to be able to talk about then the pollution of environment with these metals we are going in different fronts but we have data as Dr. Edgar said part of this initiative is maybe with nanotechnology we can do a good map of a mon monitoring of this type I'm not going to go into many more details
I want to reinforce that we already have that area s uh, studied and basically I want to finish this uh, second to the last um, film. This is we have the aerodynamic model with all the precision and all the tools that I've shown it we know how the water is moving we're already thinking on how to model models with Magdalena, Cauca, and San Jorge rivers to see how the the water moves this is uh, something that happens with the different events we have tools to be able to fix them and um, organize them and we know how to do transportation and the reactions of uh, heavy metals we're also working with sediments if we are able to fix the aerodynamic and the transportation model of the heavy metals uh, with biological process but we need the help we need the requirement of information with this then I hope that tomorrow we can show this more in detail so I can keep on propose this region as a pilot region for East and Latin America thank you very much